Meet Anuar, not just a leader, but a powerhouse in global economic diplomacy. As you've likely noticed from the headlines, Anuar has been everywhere, in less than a year, he has embarked on 23 international trips. And with each journey, it's not merely about building relationships, he's actively sealing deals that make waves in global diplomacy. Anuar has proven to be more than just a statesman, he's a strategic salesperson for the nation. Every return is marked not only by diplomatic triumphs, but also by the remarkable numbers of foreign direct investment he secures, painting a portrait of success that keeps getting bigger and bolder. It's a positive development for Malaysians, as Anwar has attracted a significant amount of foreign direct investment FDI, to Malaysia. This influx of investment can contribute to strengthening the Malaysian currency because, in the process of foreign companies establishing factories and offices, they need to acquire Malaysian ringgit. In January, Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim and Indonesian President Joko Widodo took a united stance against discrimination targeting palm oil, expressing their commitment to combat challenges arising from the European Union's plan to phase out palm oil-based fuels by 2030 due to perceived deforestation links. To address these concerns, the leaders pledged to strengthen cooperation through the Council of Palm Oil Producing Countries. During their bilateral meeting, Anwar and Jokowi signed eight memorandums of understanding, spanning areas such as shipping, export-import financing, green energy, and the development of the battery industry. Notably, the leaders discussed the planned new capital of Indonesia, Nusantara, and Anwar presented 11 letters of interest from Malaysian companies expressing potential investment in the city, located in the Indonesian part of Borneo. Anwar emphasized the potential for regional development, particularly in the Malaysian states of Sabah and Sarawak, as a result of the new capital's establishment, highlighting hopes for widespread benefits in the broader region. In March 2023, Malaysia's Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim embarked on a seemingly significant trip to Saudi Arabia, initially believed to be a private pilgrimage with his wife to perform Umrah. However, the visit took an unexpected turn when, upon arrival in Jeddah, Anwar was greeted only by Jeddah's governor, Prince Saad bin Abdullah, suggesting a shift from a private journey to an official working trip. Despite earlier indications of a major announcement, Anwar faced disappointment as scheduled meetings with MBS and other top Saudi officials did not materialize. The Malaysian media, initially hopeful for a significant development, reported hourly on Anwar's activities, but the anticipated historic announcement did not occur. The Malaysian government later cited a scheduling change during the beginning of Ramadan as the reason for the cancellation of the meetings with the King and Crown Prince slash Prime Minister, leaving the purpose and outcome of Anwar's Saudi trip shrouded in uncertainty and sparking speculation back in Kuala Lumpur. In April, Prime Minister Datuk Seri Anwar Ibrahim's successful three-day visit to China yielded a record-breaking achievement for Malaysia, a staggering RM170 billion worth of investment commitments from China. One of the highest MOUs China has signed with a country. The historic milestone was marked by the signing of 19 Memoranda of Understanding MOUs, between Chinese and Malaysian businesses during the Malaysia-China Business Forum 2023. Anwar expressed gratitude to the investors, emphasizing the significance of their confidence in Malaysia. As the largest investment from China to date, this substantial commitment underscores Malaysia's position as a preferred investment destination. Anwar, also the finance minister, highlighted the presence of renowned Chinese companies in strategic sectors such as Risen Energy, Huawei, Longe Solar, ByteDance, Jinko Solar, Eve Energy, Alliance Steel, Alibaba Group, Geely Auto Group, Shaman University, and many others, solidifying Malaysia's attractiveness. The prime minister pledged to optimize the ease of doing business in Malaysia and welcomed more partnerships with Chinese companies to foster deeper interlinkage. The success of the trip positions Malaysia for sustained economic growth and collaboration in key sectors with China. In September, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim commenced his second visit to China's Nanning to attend the 20th China ASEAN Expo at the invitation of Chinese Premier Li Chang. During his one-day working visit, Anwar had engagements with Chinese corporate leaders, highlighting the importance of fostering economic cooperation. Anwar announced that China has pledged support for Malaysia in implementing the new Industrial Master Plan 2030. This plan, requiring a total investment of RM95 billion, lays out the ambitions to elevate Malaysia into a high-tech nation within seven years. In September, Prime Minister Anwar's visit to the United States yielded positive outcomes as he engaged with 15 prominent Fortune 500 companies such as Airbnb, Amazon, Boeing, and ConocoPhillips at the Harvard Club. 
The meetings aimed to bolster investment and trade in Malaysia. Anwar's presence at the Invest Malaysia New York event, attended by investors overseeing assets totaling 40 trillion US dollars, showcased the government's commitment to fostering an inviting investment climate. In October, Prime Minister Dadak Seri Anwar Ibrahim's brief 36-hour working visit to the United Arab Emirates UAE, proved highly fruitful for Malaysia, particularly in terms of attracting significant investments from the Gulf country. This short visit resulted in substantial investment commitments amounting to RM 40.6 billion, $8.6 billion, primarily focused on renewable energy, aerospace, and logistics sectors. Notably, a Memorandum of Understanding MAU, was signed between the Malaysian Investment Development Authority MIDA, and Abu Dhabi Future Energy Company PJSC Master for Renewable Energy Projects in Malaysia, totaling up to 10 gigawatts and valued at $8 billion. Anwar, in various meetings, emphasized Malaysia's commitment to advancing renewable energy and improving the business environment, assuring potential investors that the country is now more conducive to business with clear determination and effective leadership. In October, Prime Minister Dadak Seri Anwar Ibrahim concluded his working visit to Saudi Arabia for the second time, focusing on attracting global investors to Malaysia. Following the ASEAN Gulf Cooperation Council Summit, Anwar met with Saudi Arabia's Trade Minister and the CEO of Saudi Aramco to discuss the world's largest oil and gas company's investment plans in Malaysia. The talk centered on Saudi Aramco's intention to establish Malaysia as a hub for its oil and gas development in Southeast Asia. The discussions, attended by Malaysian ministers and the ambassador to Saudi Arabia, included the exchange of Mao between Malaysian and Saudi Arabian companies involved in real estate, technology, and aviation projects. The bilateral trade between the two countries in 2023 reached 10.26 billion US dollars, marking a significant increase. Anwar's engagement demonstrated the urgency and commitment to elevate cooperation to new levels. In October, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim embarked on his second visit to Singapore, engaging in substantive discussions with Prime Minister Lee Shin Long during the 10th Singapore-Malaysia Leaders' Retreat. The leaders addressed the Johor Singapore Special Economic Zone, planning to sign an MOU on January 11, 2024. This pivotal project aims to enhance cross-border flow and bolster the Iskandar development region and Singapore's ecosystem. PM Lee emphasized the strong bilateral economic ties with Singapore as Malaysia's second largest trading partner. Discussions also centered on digital and green economies, collaboration in renewable energy, and connectivity enhancements, including the Rapid Transit System Link, a cross-border rail project between Johor Bahru in Malaysia and Singapore designed to improve transportation connectivity and alleviate congestion at land checkpoints. In November, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim announced that Malaysia has successfully secured proposed investments totaling RM63 billion in the United States, with a focus on technology giants. The amount includes RM8.33 billion from a trade and investment mission organized before the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC, summit and additional commitments from one-on-one -on -one meetings during the summit. Notable companies contributing to the investments include Abbott Laboratories, Mondelez International, Boeing, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft, TikTok, and Tesla. Anwar emphasized the importance of swift approval, technology transfer, and training to enhance Malaysia's capabilities in the explored fields, particularly in technology. The Prime Minister highlighted the positive response from Elon Musk regarding Tesla's presence in Malaysia, indicating potential growth, including an expansion of supercharging stations. Anwar reiterated Malaysia's commitment to clear and consistent investment policies to attract further investments, emphasizing the establishment of an efficient one-stop center for crucial investments. Malaysia's YTL Conglomerates Utilities Unit is set to collaborate with the U.S. technology giant NVIDIA in a $4.3 billion investment deal to jointly develop AI infrastructure in Southeast Asia. While Anwar's efforts in attracting numerous foreign direct investments FDI, are commendable, it's important to recognize that the impact of these investments may not be immediately visible. Implementing FDI projects and witnessing tangible results often requires time due to various factors. Firstly, there's a gestation period for businesses to establish their operations, hire and train local staff, and integrate into the local business environment. Additionally, the full realization of economic benefits, such as increased job opportunities, enhanced infrastructure, and technology transfer, typically unfolds gradually. 
Complex bureaucratic processes, regulatory compliance, and unforeseen challenges can also contribute to delays. Patience is crucial as the long-term benefits of FDI take time to materialize and the positive effects on the economy may become more evident as these investments mature and contribute to sustained growth and development. In the first nine months of 2023 alone, the country attracted a whopping RM225 billion, 52.3 billion US dollars in approved investments, exceeding its full year target by a significant margin. This is a clear signal of investor confidence in Malaysia's vibrant economy and its potential for future growth. I assure you that under my watch, we will ensure that the ease of doing business and undertaking investments in Malaysia will be at optimal level. So, build more partnerships with Malaysian companies, particularly in strategic sectors to advance deeper interlinkages, says Anwar Ibrahim. PM's trip also sent the message that the country is no longer distracted by internal political woes and leadership changes, but open to all in the world who want to participate in its restructuring and journey to be a dynamic and soon to be a high-income nation. So, how do we, as Malaysians, ensure that our country moves forward as one unified nation? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.